too good. Okay. She's too good. Not an outwardly appearance of religion, of 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 somebody who's just religious out outwardly, but it is an internal transformation into Christ likeness. Do you see the difference there about being religious in a worldly term and being godly, being Christ like, being transformed inside out? So in discussing godliness today, we're going to be discussing two questions. One, first one is this, so how do we become godly? Number two, what are the things that a godly person is to avoid? We're going to be discussing these two questions today. Number one, how do we become godly? First Timothy chapter 4 verses 7 through 8 says this, but have nothing to do with pointless and silly myths. Rather, train yourself in godliness. For the training of the body has limited benefit, but godliness is beneficial in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. It's very simple, right? It says, hey, physical training has some benefits while you're here on this earth, but spiritual training, spiritual training of godliness has greater benefits because it's not only for while you're here, but for all eternity, which makes perfect sense to us. Now, godliness, like today's verse says, we must train. It doesn't come to us naturally. It's not like somebody gets up in the morning and says, hey, I just feel godly today. It's not like Jimmy gets up and looks in the mirror and says, hey, today I look very godly. godly. I feel godliness rising inside of me. It doesn't work that way. It's a process of being trained. We are, to, we are commanded to train ourselves in godliness like we train ourselves physically. How many of you do any training physically? Let me see your hand. Anybody? Okay. Couple? Let me ask you, what is involved in physical training? What is involved in physical training? Some people may say, hey, exercise. Well, physical training involves exercise, of course, but physical training is just so much more than just exercising. If you ask a physical trainer, Physical trainer will break down physical training, physical fitness into three parts. One, one is eating. You have to eat right. Number two is resting. You have to rest right. And number three is exercising. Okay. Anyone serious about physical fitness must train themselves to form a healthy healthy habit of eating right, resting right, and exercising consistently. Make sense? Yeah. So let's first discuss eating. No matter how much you exercise, you will not be physically fit if you don't eat well. Do you agree? You could exercise all you want, but if you eat really bad food, if you eat too much food, all the time, you're just going to be a very muscular, unhealthy person. <laughs> it is not a healthy thing. The first thing the trainer wants to know is your current eating habits of what you eat, how much you eat, and how often you eat it. Okay? And this evaluation has to be honest. You know, it's easy right now as, you, as you're sitting down, as you're at home, just think to yourself, well, what do I eat? How often do I eat it? What are my eating habits? To be physically fit, you have to cut off junk foods, right? You have to cut off binge eating. Just, I'm okay, I, I'm controlling my diet and all of a sudden I'm going to have four Big Macs. It does, just doesn't work that way. 
You can't just control your diet and one day say, okay, I'm going to have three bags of Oreo cookies. Not only do you have to control junk food, you have to cut them off. You have to cut off binge eating and you have to cut off late night snacks. You can't have ramen at 2 in the morning, James, and go to sleep, right? It just can't work that way. Second thing is resting. If you don't give your body time to recuperate an opportunity to rest, you cannot be physically fit. Now, most of you know, if you don't get your rest next day, you can't even concentrate on your schoolwork and stuff. Sleeping at night is important, but it's also important to take some time off during the day just to relax and recuperate your mind and your body. How many of you take naps? Okay. How many of you, how many of you take some time off in the day just to relax to yourself? All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Those times are very, very important. Number third is exercising. Are you exercising right now? What do you do? I exercise in breathing. <laughs> I take a walk every day. How many of you do lifts, weights? Any guys weightlifting? No? Any girls? Yoga? What, do, what, what is that thing called? Platus, plat, platius, platy. Okay. <laughs> so, how often do you exercise? Can you say you're exercising if you exercise one day a week? Is that considered exercise? Not if you ask the doctors, right? In exercising, there's a phrase: no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. Why do people say no pain, no gain? You know, do you know how the muscle develops? I'm sure you guys all know. The muscle develops and bulks up to the process of muscle fibers being torn apart and then the muscle repairing itself. It's a process of tearing and repairing, tearing and repairing that makes the muscle big. That's why I don't have much muscles because I don't tear my muscles that much. If you see those big guys in the gym, it's because they're pushing their limits. They're pushing it so hard that they're tearing the muscles and then they give time to, to what? For the muscles to repair itself. And then what do they do again? Tear it again. And then they go through this process of tearing and repairing until the muscles get bulky. You know, the trainer will, will assess your current condition and discuss the desired outcome. If Hamilton wants to be in the Olympics, the trainer will talk to her and say, what's your desired outcome? And then the trainer will pu and put together a training program so we could reach that outcome, right? Likewise, training in spiritual fitness requires the same thing that requires physical fitness. That's what Paul, the, Paul is saying in 1 Timothy 4. We must train ourselves in godliness. So let's think about this. Eating. Just as an assessment of what we are feeding our body is needed, we need to take an inventory of what we are feeding our soul. Well, we are feeding our spirit. We need to assess how much junk food we let through our eyes. How much junk food we are feeding our mind and our hearts. How many of you eat junk food spiritually? Most of us actually do. Do you guys ever binge? on spiritually not good junk foods, hours and hours at a time? Do you have late night snacks of junk food spiritually? Well, when you get up in the morning, it's gonna show. As if, when you eat ramen and you go to sleep, your face gets all bloated. When you 
do light, late night binging on spiritual junk food and you get up, your spirit's going to be, spiritually, you're going to feel bloated. It's, it's not going to be feeling healthy. We need to ask ourselves, what do we desire? What is the outcome that we desire of how spiritually fit you want to be? How much do you want to be like Christ? Controlling what you eat spiritually is like controlling what you eat physically. It involves disciplining yourself to cut off unhealthy diet. Understand? Now, discipline means, well, so we need to do this. We need to discipline ourselves. So, discipline comes from the word decide, which means to cut away. Disciplining yourself means to make decisions to cut away the things that are keeping us from being like Christ, being godly. We have to make decisions to cut them away. So be aware, be deliberate about what you feed your soul. Pay attention to what you watch. Pay attention to what you hear. Pay attention to what you think. Train yourself. Discipline, discipline yourself. Make decisions to cut away those things that do not get you to become more and more Christ-like. Remember last week's message when I talked about cutting off and gouging out? Gouging out? Do you remember that part? It's better to limp with God than to run with sinners, right? It's better to limp into heaven than run into hell, right? Number two is resting. You know, this world is very, very good at preoccupying your mind. It's everywhere. The moment you turn on your computer to do any work, it's everywhere. It's everywhere to overload your mind. The world wants to keep you preoccupied with worries and anxieties, with greed and pride, with lust and temptation. It does, and it succeeds because it's continuously just bombarding you every awaking moment of your life. It's going to bombard you and overwhelm you with useless visual information. It's going to demand your attention through media. It wants to expand all of your time and energy in the things of the world. And it's going to try to make you as tired as possible. When you're tired and you... How many of you in a tired state try to read the Bible? We try it. Every one of us tried it before. It doesn't work that well, does it? You just feel spiritually drained. You're like reading this thing and I'm saying, okay, I'm just going to the exercise, but I'm just tired. I can't get, I can't wait till I get to the end of this chapter so I can close this book. That's the world is trying to do. It wants to give you no rest. You know, on TV, sometimes you see these guys playing computer games for like 48 hours or something. And you see them, they look like a zombie. They're like... I said, that's stupid. But if you look at your life, sometimes we do that to our lives too. We give ourselves no time to rest from the things of this world, from our spiritual junk foods. You need to actively choose to rest in God. Understand? You need to make that choice. You need daily Sabbath. This weekly Sabbath, one day a week, it's not even one day a week. It's how many minutes out of that one day. But we need daily Sabbath. We need time to just relax in the presence of God. Most of us are Sabbath deprived. Most of us are rest deprived. We are tired all the time. I need all of you to try to take... 30 minutes of your time between noon and 6 p.m., okay? 30 minutes of your time between noon and 6 p.m. 
for you to rest in God, to rest with God. Now, two youth hangouts ago, my recommendation to our youth was this. Before you do any exercise in homework or anything like that, try to take an opportunity to open the Word of God before you do any studying and just read a chapter and spend some time with God. It's going to get you to relax with God. It's going to open up your spiritual sense and it's going to give you a peace of mind. So actually it's going to help you to be more effective in studying. Noon to 6 p.m., I want you to try to take one chapter of rest with God. Thirdly, exercising. Most of us don't strain ourselves when we exercise spiritually, do we? How many of you, when you're exercising spiritually, strain yourselves? You know, we try to fit in our reading here and there. We exercise our faith, we do good things, we serve God, we give, we love, but we all do all of these within our comfort zone. Not a lot of us, including me, it's hard to strain yourself spiritually. We'll do something when we can do something as much as we can do it comfortably. But I'm not going to strain myself. Well, no pain, no gain. We don't strain our spiritual muscles enough to the point where it hurts, where it rips our spiritual fiber. If you want to become spiritually strong, we need to push ourselves beyond our comfort level. Oh, I'm done with this one chapter. Okay, I'm done. Whew, that was too much for me. It's like, oh, I did three setups. Oh, that's just extremely too much. If you want to be spiritually strong, we need to push ourselves beyond our spiritually comfort level. We need to remember no pain, no gain doesn't apply only to the things of this world, but spiritually, we need to push ourselves. Secondly, what are the things that a godly person is to avoid? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 through 7 says this. If anyone teaches false doctrine and does not agree with the sound teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and with the teachings that promote godliness, he is deceited and understands nothing, but has an unhealthy interest in disputes and arguments over words, from these come envy, crawling, slander, evil suspicions, and constant disagreement among people whose minds are depraved and deprived of the truth. We are to avoid unhealthy interest in disputes, arguments over words that cause envy, crawling, slander, and evil suspicion and disagreement. This is such a big problem in this world. We love to argue about things. If somebody disagrees with us, we'll go to war in this world. Do you know why? These are usually the result of our pride and self-righteousness, self-centeredness. These are the result of my will, not God's will. My image, not God's image. My likeness, not Christ's likeness. I'm not saying avoid oh, disagree disagreements at all costs. That's not what I'm saying. We shouldn't agree with someone who blatantly disagrees with, with God or is dis blatantly unbiblical. But that's not what the scripture is talking about. It's about raising our voice. And arguing because we want our voice to be heard. We want to be right. We want people to agree with me that I'm right. That my thoughts, my perspective is better. It's best. Because godliness involves becoming more Christ-like. The one thing that I must avoid 
in godliness in, is being self-centered, self-righteous. I need to avoid at all costs pride and being conceited. Next time you find yourself arguing about, I'm right, you're wrong, about something that's really not meaningful, which means not really that godly, I need you to catch yourself. Because this is something you need to avoid to become godly. How many of you are satisfied at where you are right now? How many of you are satisfied at the person you are right now? I'm really happy that I'm myself. You know, many people are dissatisfied of who they are becoming. Many people are, in fact, <clears throat> surprised that they are the way they are. I don't know how I ended up here. How come I'm like this? Something wrong. Well, people shouldn't be surprised. After all, the person that you are is simply the outcome of the choices that you make each and every day. Understand? It's not an accident. And, it, and, and there's really nothing to be surprised about. After this, when I go home, I need to take 101 South. If I choose to take 101 North, should I be surprised that I ended up in San Francisco? No, because I chose to go North instead of South. This has nothing to do with how I feel. I'm in San Francisco because that was the choice that I made. Besides, didn't I see all those signs on my way to the city? How can I be surprised when I ended up in San Francisco? All the way up North 101, San Francisco 30 miles, San Francisco 7 miles, San Francisco 3 miles. There's signs. When you decide to be lazy, when you decided to be quick-tempered and angry, when you decided to be resentful and hateful, when you decided to dwell in your lust, when you decided to let yourself be conceited and self-righteous, didn't you, didn't you see the signs in your life that you were headed in the wrong direction? That you were headed towards a place that you didn't want to end up spiritually? Why did you continue on that path? Why are you choosing to continue your sin? Why are you going down the wrong path? The, the choices you make right now is going to determine who you will become tomorrow. I guarantee you. Don't be surprised. Every day you are becoming the person you have decided to become. Don't be surprised. What are the choices you are making today, right now? Think about it, because that's the person you're becoming tomorrow. Do you want to become an unthankful, unrepentful, unloving, unchanging, ungodly person? Or do you want to become a partaker of God's divine nature? In closing, let me just sum summarize this for you. We need to be spiritually fit. We need to be a godly person. We need to exercise while we eat, our resting, and our exercising. Don't eat spiritual junk food. Don't binge on spiritual junk food, the worldly junk food. You know, a small bag of chips here and there, nobody's going to argue with that, right? But it's not okay if you have the entire container of cheese puffs. When you're opening your computer and you're letting something in your eye, I would say, when that happens, watch yourself. Am I just killing myself with this spiritual junk food? 
Watch what you eat spiritually. Number two, try to rest with God. Give your spirit time to rest and recoup every day. Give yourself time between noon to six to spend some time with God. Lastly, train yourself, exercise godliness by practicing your faith and self-control. Living the good life of Jesus Christ by living your life with Jesus Christ. Look for opportunity in your daily life to exercise your spirit. Make conscious decision. I want you this week to try to push your spiritual exercise beyond the level of comfort. Okay? Push your comfort zone. Let's rip some spiritual fibers. Okay? Let's become spiritually bulked this week. Let's everybody close our eyes. Our Heavenly Father, we are where we are because of the choices that we have made every single day of our life. The choices that we are making is making me who I am. The choices I make today is going to make me who I am tomorrow. I don't want to be surprised, Lord. I, want, I don't want our youth to be surprised. Every one of us here, Isaac, Rebecca, Shiu, Daniel, Jimin, everyone at home. I want each and every one of our youth, Lord, to think about who they want to become tomorrow and make choices today so that they could become that person tomorrow. When we headed down the wrong path and you are showing us signs, Lord, I pray that we will not ignore them. We know the signs. We could see it. We could read it. But we choose to be indifferent to it. We, we decide to ignore it because we just want to head it down the wrong path, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just convict us, Lord. Wake us up, Lord. That we'll be committed to head back, repent back to you, Lord. Turn 180 degrees around from the wrong path that we're going and come back to you, Lord. I pray that we will train ourselves to eat right, to rest with you, and to exercise our faith in you, with you, Lord. I pray that we would supplement to our faith, our goodness, our knowledge, self-control, to virtue, steadfastness, Lord, this godliness. That we could become like you every single day because that's the person we want to become. Please, even those, maybe some of our youth do not desire it, I pray that you would help them to desire it, Lord. We thank you for our daily provisions that you provide for us. We thank you for keeping us safe and healthy. We thank you for spiritual parents, Lord. We thank you because you loved us and you are forgiving us every single day even though we choose to go down the wrong path. We thank you and we love you for that, Lord. Every one of us here confesses our love for you. It's just overwhelming to us, Lord. We don't know what to do sometimes. I pray that you would help us, Lord. Give us determination that this week we would push our spiritual comfort zone to the next level. That we would have, we would rip our spiritual comfort level. That we would bulk up and strength up spiritually, Lord. That we could love beyond our comfort levels, Lord. That we could, that we could give more than our comfort level. That we would spend time with you more than our comfort level. Keep us safe for another week. We pray all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's get into our small groups.